everyone, Jim D. Graham with rcgroups.com, and today I'm doing something pretty cool. This is a first look at the Real Flight Trainer Edition from Real Flight and Horizon Hobby. This has just come out. It is not released yet. It'll be available in about a week, but I was excited to get my hands on the software and have permission to share it with you on rcgroups.com and our YouTube channel. So we're currently on Steam, and you can go check this out there, take a look at some screenshots, see some of the airplanes that are available and included in this Real Flight Trainer Edition. The description is, the Real Flight Trainer Edition is the perfect way to learn radio control flying on your PC with six aircraft from Horizon Hobby and flying lessons from experienced RC pilots. You'll be ready to solo in no time. So who is this for? Primarily, it's for you, the pilot who are, you're not a pilot. You want to be an RC pilot. You don't know where to start. This is a great place to start. And this is coming from a person who did not have access to this initially. I did have access to building airplanes and crashing them. And I realized uh, pretty quickly that I should do something. So I sold one of my airplanes. This was a long time ago and got real flight and taught myself to land and went back to the field and have had success ever since. I was also at the field yesterday and I was talking to Rich Leverone and I asked him, I said, hey man, how did you get started in RC? And he said he bought a Horizon plane with SAFE. We're going to talk about SAFE and the planes in this uh, Real Flight Trainer Edition have SAFE. And he said he just flew around in the beginner mode until he got better. And he said by the time he was done, he could do just about anything he wanted with that airplane. And so this is an added uh, what would it be? An added cushion for you. So before you take your $300 plus airplane out to the field, you can download Real Flight Trainer Edition. And let's talk about where you can get this. You can get it from Steam. You can buy the key in a local hobby shop. Or if you're buying one of the first run Haboos, I guess it will come in that. More on that is it develops um, but you would be able to get this as a beginner and not only teach yourself to fly in a flight sim. And of course you have the, the great red button on the transmitter or the great red button on the transmitter that allows you to uh, reset your plane after you crash it. But you would also be able to fly some of these airplanes and figure out which one might be best for you. Before we look at the airplane list, which might be the most exciting part, I want to say that if you're serious about becoming a pilot, you're buying this software to do that, you definitely need an Interlink transmitter. Now, mine is old. I've had multiple versions of this software, um, but you can buy the transmitter from Horizon Hobby. And the reason you need that is you want to be flying with the same or learning with the same device in your hands or a similar device that you'll have out in the field. So we'll look at it. You could use a joystick with this software, but that's not really going to help you when it comes to being a real pilot. Um, what else? Let's scroll down and look at some of the airplanes that you are going to be able to enjoy. Those include the Blade 230 SV2, E-Flight Apprentice STS 1.5, the E-Flight Habu STS 70 millimeter EDF. That's pretty exciting. The Hobby Zone Aero Scout S. I'm a Hobby Zone Aero Scout lover. Um, it's one of my favorite birds. It's great for FPV. It's great for learning. It's great for just everything. It's the, I call it the uh, four by four, the four wheel drive of, of RC because it's great for everything. It, it likes wind. You can uh, throw it around and, and horse around a lot. It's great. Hobby Zone Carbon Cubs S plus 1.3 and the Hobby Zone Sport Cub S. So these are the planes that are available. We're talking about where you can find them. And now, let's see, is there anything else we need to think about? I think what I'll do now is bring the software on over into our screen. And this is the landing page. You'll be flying at Eli Field, which is great. I've flown there many times. And this is a photo field. And so there's some options here that you can take a lesson from a trained professional. Or you can select an aircraft and fly that. And then ultimately, they, the option to upgrade to RF9 full, which brings you a vast cornucopia of RC aircraft that you can fly from drones, quads, helis, you name it. It's all in there. But first, let's look at the lessons. So I'm coming back now. You're a new pilot. You have no idea where to start. And uh, this first lesson reminds me, uh, my father-in-law, uh, we 
he was, he's always been interested in RC and we both built these airplanes. I forget what they were, but we were in Florida and I, I said, uh, I'll be right there. And I looked up and he was taxiing around with his new airplane that I'd never flown. And we were going to fly these together and I was going to help him. And so my rule is whenever a new person says they're taxiing around, that is code word for they're accidentally going to take off. And he did, and he crashed it, and then he couldn't fly his airplane for the rest of our trip. So uh, coming back to the simulator, you're going to learn how to taxi. You're going to learn how to take off and fly. And all the things you need to learn before you uh, take your airplane that you've never flown before and accidentally take off. So let's go to take a lesson. We'll click on that right here. And there's a lot of lessons. Uh, beginner mode one, mode two, Habu, safe technology. And all of these are great things to do, and they don't take very long. So we'll go to the very first lesson, just so you get an idea of what you've got here. So we're going to hit begin. And uh, this is taking off. So now that we've taxied into position or ready for takeoff, uh, we can advance the throttle. And in this case, we are flying from grass, so it will take a little more throttle to get the airplane rolling and then to get it off of the ground. So we're going to slowly advance the throttle. You can see here the airplane is starting to roll. Be sure to look at that to transmitter. Advance the throttle a little bit more. And when we get to the right throttle setting, in this case, the airplane rotates naturally and starts to climb out. We're about three quarter power here. We're going to let the airplane climb to a comfortable altitude. And once it's there, we're going to slowly throttle back to a little bit above half power. You can see the airplane naturally level out. And now we're ready to continue flying. So there's your first lesson. You'll note underneath the video screen you have uh, you can replay the video you can try it so if we were to press that button we'd be in that airplane trying to take off and then the menu to get back and what I noted before is the great thing about real flight is you have the stick view and you can watch the stick movements which when I was learning I don't know that I ever did that it never occurred to me to look at the hands of the of the instructor I was always looking in the sky also over here we have the flight modes and that is on a three-way switch on your transmitter and also on your real RC plane. And the great thing about Horizon planes, I know I'm really bragging on Horizon, but when you get the airplane, it's usually, you can get it in the air in about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and everything's usually set up. I almost never have to trim. They always say trim the plane, but they always seem to come pre-trimmed. AS3X is great for a lot of reasons, but when you're a beginner, that's really who it's for. So let's try it. Let's jump over. And uh, here we are, we're in the grass. And then let's go up and look at the aircraft. Oh, in the try it, I don't guess that's an option right now. So what I'm gonna do is take off. We're gonna stay in beginner. I'm gonna show you the limitations of beginner, intermediate and experienced. And then we're gonna go back to beginner and we're gonna land and I'm gonna show you how easy that is. So, as you take off, you can actually feel the grass pulling on your plane, just like in real life. Throttling up, pulling. I'm gonna turn this plane around. Now, if you are a beginner and you're watching this, this part of the flying is easy. When the airplane comes back to you, everything you do is reversed, all your inputs. That's what you have to learn, and that's muscle memory, and that is what a flight simulator's for. Okay, so we're a little below half throttle. I'm doing a slow flyby, and I'm gonna show you a full right and watch my sticks. That's full right. That's as much as it's going to give you. That's full left. This is up, full, and down. So my son is a stick banger, and that means that he will just bang those sticks into all four corners until it does what he wants. And that's not a bad way to learn. That is not... Oh, wait. Let's do this while we're at it. Let's do a landing. So I'm chopping the throttle. I'm taking my fingers off the transmitter. And when I say uh, these planes land themselves in beginner mode, they almost do. So now we're going to jump back up. I'm going to turn her around. And then we're going to go into intermediate. And we'll see what limitations that gives you. So we're going to check to make sure I'm in. There we go. We're in intermediate. And so now you're feeling more confident. You want to do something uh, more radical. So this is full right. You can't roll, but you get a much bigger right turn left full up almost a loop but not quite giving it some throttle 
down. Okay, now we'll land it again. I'm going to land it with my hands off the sticks. My fingers are off the sticks. Oh, we're going to land in the back 40. Let's just see if it will. Beautiful. Going back up. I'm going to bring it around and we're going into experience mode. So in experience mode, I'm going to throttle up. Whoa! Oh, I lost it. Okay. Experience mode, and now we're going to do a roll. So you can now roll. You could do a, I'll bring it around so we get a closer view. You can do a loop. You always want to make sure there's room at the bottom of that loop and your real airplane. Fly inverted. And more. Bring it around. We'll land it. I'm going to land it in experience mode without, well, hello. Okay, don't do that in real life, y'all. Bring it around. Throttle down. I'm going to just let go of the sticks. All right, experience mode is, is free. And, and by that, I mean uh, the plane is free to do what it wants. Okay, so let's go back to the menu. And we might look at another lesson. Um, let's go back. Taxi. Taking off taxi. We'll look at taxi. I'll just show you a few of these to get an idea of what's going on. So welcome to our first lesson for flight training. And uh, before we can take off, we have to start by taxiing. And so we're gonna use the left-hand stick here, which controls the rudder. You can see the rudder moving back and forth and also the nose wheel is moving back and forth because that's what uh, actually steers the airplane on the ground. Uh, we're flying off a grass surface today, so we do need to add a little more power than you might have to add when you're flying from a smooth surface like a runway. So you're getting all these great tips. And let me say, if you are new, once again, taxiing is important. Don't skip over anything. Uh, they wouldn't show it to you unless you needed to see it. So how do we get out of here? Let's go to lesson select, quit, and we're backing out. Now we're at Eli Field. We have full control over our three-way switch. And now let's take a look at the aircraft because there's some things I want to show you. Well, you know what? Before we do that, I'll show you this. Um, you can go into simulation, select controller, and here you have the option for the interlink, this guy, or the Xbox One. And the only reason you would want to use an Xbox controller style controller is if you just wanted to see how this software operated. You definitely don't want to teach yourself on an Xbox One. So just take my word. Don't do that. We're going to get out of there. Oh, you can also go in and edit your transmitter inputs and um, all the things that you might want to change or add. That's more advanced. Don't even worry about it. The only uh, environment you have is Eli Field. Correct. Verifying that. That's correct. All right. And then we'll go into aircraft. And I'm going to show you a couple of things. I've pulled up a page here uh, for some definitional terms. So we have the apprentice, that's what we were flying, but then we have the apprentice with LAS and GPS. So your question is, what is LAS? LAS is landing assist sensor that automatically flares for smoother landings. Wait until you see this in action. It's pretty remarkable. This uh, really extends the, it lands itself. Okay, I gotta go here. Someone's watching this who is a trainer, he trains people, or they train people. Um, or they're just an experienced pilot and they're saying all of this is flying the airplane for you. This is bad. They should fly the airplane themselves. It's true. But if you're going to crash multiple real airplanes, your chances of staying in the hobby are, are going down. So if I can get an E-Flight Apprentice with LAS, then it increases my chances of success as a pilot. And ultimately, you're going to get out of that and not use it. And you're going to want to learn to flare yourself. What is flare? Flare is when you come down to the runway. Maybe we can look at this video and they'll tell us. And, and you pull up right before you come to the ground and have a butterfly landing, you know, where you lightly touch down. The other thing is what is safe. Safe is sensor-assisted flight envelope technology. And this is beginner, intermediate, and experienced flight modes. And we just went over that. I'm just giving you what SAFE stands for. So uh, what about GPS? Um, I'm going to have to learn a little bit more about that. Uh, 
Okay, while we're here just talking about, I mean, we're looking at planes that have a certain feature, so we might as well know what these features are. Easily upgrade to Safe Plus GPS enabled technology with quick and easy installation of the optional Spectrum GPS module, sold separately. You can add next level autonomous guidance features. Auto land activated simply by holding down a button. The advanced auto land function puts the airplane on stabilized approach to land on its own GPS initialization point. Holding pattern. I have used this in some FPV applications. Uh, it might be great if you had a uh, somebody teaching you to fly and they put it in a holding pattern while they were handing over you. Although, anyway, let's read what they say. The very helpful Safe Plus exclusive feature essentially allows you to pause the flight. Okay, so you're losing your mind. Let's say you're in the air and you're like, and I've seen it. I've seen people get up, uh, new pilots, and literally start losing their mind. So you could uh, pause the flight by putting the plane into a GPS guided holding pattern. Uh, so... That's super interesting, really going beyond what was around when I started to fly. And a virtual fence, this would be uh, handy if you were like in an airfield and you certainly did not want to get farther out than you meant to. Okay, let's uh, look at some of the aircraft. We're just going to go through the menu and look at the blade. I am going to uh, play around with this helicopter. I never was a very good helicopter pilot. The Apprentice, Apprentice with LAS and GPS. The Apprentice with just LAS. The Habu with landing assist, which might not be a bad idea. A 3S Habu and a 4S, which should be uh, ballistic. And then we have the uh, 70 mil EDF 4S. So this would be like a an advanced 4S plane. Hobby Zone Aero Scout 1.1, one of my favorites. And the Carbon Cub S Plus. S plus and the Sport Cub S. So once again, all of these are things you're going to be able to fly and kind of get a feel for and decide, hey, this is what I want. This is what I want to fly. So we're going to go into the Apprentice. Heck, let's go full blown. We'll go Apprentice with LAS and GPS. We'll make sure we're in Beginner. We're going to take off and bring it around and I'm going to take my fingers off, fingers off the sticks and, and we're going to watch the uh, LAS work. So that thing pretty much leaps off the ground. I'm going to swing it out and swing it back at a little altitude, just a little bit. I'm going to chop the throttle. Uh, everything I'm doing right here are things you're going to learn with your airplane at the airfield, how far out you need to chop the throttle to bring it in. And I'm still giving it some up elevator. I'm going to stop now and we're going to land naturally. That little, that was your flare right there. When you heard the, uh, let's do it again. I'll go out this way. See if I can get it right in front of us. So it's going to sense the ground and flare and also throttle up if, if it needs it. And once again, this is how your full scale, or not your full scale, but your real RC airplane is going to operate. All right, I'm still on the sticks. I'm off the sticks now, and let's watch it. So there you go. And the more you fly, the better you'll be with your plane. Now my fingers are off the sticks. And a perfect landing again. So pretty cool. So let's go fly some airplanes. Let's go jump into the, oh, you know, let's go into my favorite, the Aero Scout. Okay, we're going to start out in my favorite, the Aero Star. We're going to get in beginner and jump off, take a look at uh, just how it handles, and then we'll go to experience. So we're in the air, full right hand turn. We're almost at full throttle, half throttle, full left hand turn. I'm gonna bring it up the camera and go experienced. Oh, all right. I think there's a lesson to be learned there. If you're in a hard right, don't switch to experienced. Let's try that again. So once I'm just flipping my three way switch right here. So we're going to 
take a hard right, but then we're going to level out whenever we switch into different modes. So uh, I'm, I'm in beginner now experienced and I go into a full roll. So that's just something to know. I'm going to chop that throttle, go into experienced, and she does nice rolls. I'm going to a loop. Not a great loop. But nice inverted flight. Let's see if I can get it up. Okay. Bring her around to the camera. Controlling my uh, altitude with my throttle now. Hello. Rolling over. Straight up. I'm going to go to beginner. And kick it. And bring it in for landing. Got my rudder here, ruddering in. Oh, I crashed. Okay. You get the idea. Pretty awesome. All right, aircraft select. Um, let's not go to the helicopter just yet. Let's go to the uh, sport cub. Oh, this thing's tiny. Okay, we're in safe. So the good thing about a tiny plane is when they crash, they, they don't crash as bad because they're lighter, so there's less force. But uh, you can't fly them in high wind, but with AS3X, you can actually take a little wind, more wind than a plane that didn't have it. Tighter areas that you can fly it in because it's smaller. You can fly it slower. This is pretty great. It makes me want it already. If you uh, had a big back pasture this might be something that you might want to learn with. Look at those flat turns. Okay, so you're watching my sticks, so you can, I don't have to tell you what I'm doing, but that's a rudder turn right there. It's dropping a little. When you turn with the rudder, you always want to give a little up elevator. Pretty awesome. Let's go to intermediate. Okay, let me just give a right and a left. All right, we'll bring it back into the camera. Let's go rudder turn and see what we get. Oh, now on intermediate, it's not as smooth. And so you get, have to give a lot more up elevator to keep it flat. Let's give it some throttle too. All right, I'm gonna land it in intermediate here. Ruddering, straightening up. Boy, I have a problem with these bushes. Uh, now we'll go advanced on this guy. See what it'll do. Well, it won't. It won't hover, which it shouldn't. Well, let's just fly then. We'll do some hammerheads. Rudder. Get a better one. That is max power. Let's go do that again. Let's go straight up. Let's see what we get for vertical. Okay. So this is definitely a fly around the backyard and be cool. But with at an experience level, you can turn a lot tighter. And once you got some hours on this plane, I'm pretty sure you can have a lot of fun. And we'll land it. Thank you. All right, let's go jump to something else. Uh, I guess we'll hit the, the Habu. Ah, uh, we'll go 4S after the 3S. So this has landing assist. We'll go into safe. We'll take off. Well, not a lot of speed, but definitely wanted to leave the ground. So that is a hard right. And that is a hard left. So there's not much there. I'm going to go to intermediate. Hard right. We'll swing it around. And we're going to chop throttle. This is probably a little faster in the air because it's more streamlined. And we're going to level. We're very floaty. Everyone loves a floaty airplane. I don't think it's going to land in time to get to the runway. Okay. We're going to bring it back around. Hey, there's the car track. Uh, it's so weird to see this place empty because I've every time I've been here, it's just been packed. Okay, this is me turning hard right to get back to the runway, but I am chopping throttle full. I'm going to come over the runway. I'm going to rudder it to get lined up. 
And now I'm just going to let it land. Oh, there's an auto flare right there. So it did that on its own. All right. Very docile. Lands on its own. Now we're in uh, experienced. So this is three cell. So we're, you're about to see the difference in a... When we say three cell, in case you're not aware, three cell lithium polymer versus four cell. So it would be like a, uh, a small motor and a large motor or a medium motor and, and a bigger motor. It's going to be faster, have more power. So that's full throttle. You can go straight up. And it's going to fall out. And then we're going to land it. And then we're going to go to 4S. Hey, uh, in the comments, let me know if this video is too long, if you'd rather me get to the point in the future. I mean, I feel like I'm trying to hit all the points. But maybe, maybe I could be more pointed. Okay, the Habu 4S. 4S usually means awesome. Full throttle. Experience mode. Let's do a roll. Well, I'd like a tighter roll than that, but you could you could get that going in your radio or on your control surfaces. Let's do some, bring it in, we'll do some vertical. Alright, let me throttle off. Coasting, gliding, we'll do landing, and it's become a goth video all of a sudden. We'll do a landing and experience mode. Oh man, that was all me, by the way. Was it? Yeah, it was. Okay, we're gonna go to beginner and land it. Now I don't know what beginner's gonna buy you here except your AS3X, your gyro. Turn it. Get a little shop it. Work hard to make it turn left. Turn left. Come on, baby. This is the one thing of it. Once you get past beginner mode, you're you just don't feel like you have enough control. But when you're new, it keeps you from overcorrecting. So I am full throttle down. And I'm gonna fly right over the runway. I'm gonna rudder the left a little bit. Oh. Uh oh, all right. Okay. All right, so that's the Habu. Select aircraft. Let's see what else. Um, let's try the heli. And let's see how I do. So I did fly helis back in the days before uh, they had gyros. Agility, intermediate, beginner. Did that just change? Okay. Uh, there's a switch, right? There we go. Okay. All right. I am just like a beginner. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Okay. Forward flight. Reverse. Right. Oh, now let me tell you this. AS or the uh, beginner mode probably comes in super handy because helis will love you for to overcorrect and crash. That's what they want. A little tail turn, bring it in nose first. Oh, now everything's backwards. This is like relearning how to fly an airplane. All right, we'll go intermediate just for fun. See if I can do anything crazy. Holy smokes! Oh. It's amazing I lasted that long. Okay, so now I went to, I reset the heli and I've got this. It's telling me what to do. Center stick, turn that off. Enable throttle hold, disable analog. Okay. It's complicated here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Wow. Okay. Let's go to agility mode. Okay, one more time. Okay, enough of that. Good luck to all you helicopter pilots out there. That's why they're awesome. They, they totally live in a whole nother brain space I can't even relate to. Um, we've flown the Apprentice. We've flown the Habu. 
Uh, what else? Arrow Scout, yes. Carbon Z Cub. We have not flown this. So we're going to fly this. And uh, then I guess we're out of here. So we have AS3X. We get an intermediate. Oh, okay. So this is kind of what I'm used to. AS3X gives you the gyro without anything else. And this is where I, as an experienced pilot, fly. And uh, this is where you, as a new pilot, would fly. Lots of power. Great size. Big tires. Very Tundra-like. This is a left-hand turn and beginner, which is a lot more aggressive than we've seen in the other planes. Up, down, that's about the same. Let's go land it. Wow, I'm already liking this guy. I like the size uh, because you can see it in the sky. It could take a little wind. It's not too big. All right. That was me hands off. I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna try to land it this time. I like that gear. If that's the way the real plane's gear reacts to a hard landing, I love that. I'm gonna bring it around. Also, um, I love touch and goes like this where you're doing tight turns and doing it. So, throttle down, flaring, flaring, flaring. Smooth, take off. Now we're going into just AS3X, inverted. All right, do a loop. Very tight loop, man. It's got it going on there. Inverted flight. Bubble down a little bit. Much more uh, control than the other trainers. Roll back over. Get a little throttle. Rudder to the left. Let's see how it rudder turns right away. A little up. A lot of rudder authority. You can get a good flat turn out of it. Pretty good vertical. All right, let's bring it back to us. Not right, crashing. I'm gonna give it throttle and a hard rudder input. Man, this thing's pretty awesome. It'll almost hover. I'm going to lose it. It's torquing on me. Ah, ah. Yeah. Pretty impressive, though. Let me do that again. Okay, let's just try like a Harrier. I'm getting out of the wheelhouse here. I'll stop. Is that... How about a knife edge? This thing's pretty awesome. Now, I don't know. If you're new, you might be, oh, that's too much for me. But let me do one more thing. Let's say we're at the field... Okay, that was all advanced, yes. Okay, so let's say we're at the field and and you and I just flew this and said, I think you should buy this airplane. And you're like, I don't know. I, I don't know how to fly at all. We're in beginner mode. We're gonna take off in the grass. We're at a little above a quarter throttle. Okay, that's full rudder input. Very gentle, very flat. And now uh, we're just flying around. I guess my point is that this is totally a beginner airplane with an envelope that lets you, when you get really good, you could fly, you could do some interesting things with it. So she's gentle. She's scale like. Man, I like this plane a lot. All right, we're about to do the summary and wrap this girl up. I hope I haven't gone too long for everybody. Um, I probably will do a live video with this Thursday. Man, I'm a big fan of that. Okay, so to summarize, we are looking at the Real Flight Trainer Edition due out in about a week. You can purchase it on Steam uh, at your local hobby shop or by getting one of the first run Haboos. I definitely suggest that you get the Interlink controller if you're really learning how to fly or if you really want to use the RC Flight Sim the right way. Um, there's so many options that are in the Sim that you will actually be on the airplanes that you buy. And the fact that they've made this one off for beginners is great because who needs a simulator more than a beginner? No one. And then when you do, I mean, let's say uh, 
you get beyond being a beginner, you can still go in here and fly and have a good time. And if you want, you can up, up, uh, grade later to the newest version of Real Fly. I hope this has helped. I'm Jim T. Graham with rcgroups.com. Be sure and join us over on the forum. Lots of good talks going on. I was looking at Horizon um, threads the other day. I was looking at uh, 300,000 views and uh, 1 million views. And so there's a lot of hubbub going on about not only uh, the RC or the Real Flight Flight Sim, but also the threads themselves about the airplanes. And then finally, check out the very top of RC groups where we have our Real Flight section and go in and fly with our people. All right. Have a great week. Bye, everybody.